Hello there. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a rock face uh, for a model railway or model scenery out of the Celatex building insulation material. Okay, this section here I've already cut out from a larger insulation board using a saw. So I'm going to use this piece to demonstrate how to make the rock face. Okay, with this piece, what you need to do now is remove the actual foil on the top of the cell text. Just get that off. That's when this is glued together. I want it to stick and I found a file it doesn't. I need to get all that off basically. Okay this is just one layer of Celotex material. You can add other layers additionally to the top here by basically PVA gluing the surface and putting a layer on top, weighting that down and leave it to dry for say 24 hours. So here's one I made earlier, which is this one here. So that's double layer. Again you've got a crack in here which I'll show you how to get around that later on. And that's ready now for sculpturing. I've got this piece here. What I'm going to use is this braided knife here. Looks a bit lethal. Uh, this has been used for cutting plasterboard stuff like that. And also a Stanley type knife like this. And what I'm going to do here just start snipping away cutting bits off just scraping it and sculpturing it as well so just scrape away, it makes a mess here what I advise is really to use a mask Scrape away there, and then with the Stanley knife, just start taking little chunks out like that. Just pull it away. So basically, just sculpturing this. We'll have a knife on there. You just pull, and that will expose. Okay, I've sculptured the rock face into the Celotex. And on this bit here, I've sculptured uh, where the incline is to the hill. So that's been taken away there. So it's a very messy job. As you can see, there's a lot here that needs vacuuming. Just going to add some detail here where the rocks have split over time. So we're just going to score certain areas at random. Just like that to start off with. Not too much. What I'm going to do is take the bigger knife. You could use a bread knife for this. Let's pick an area, say here, just move along there and start just taking a bit little chunks out of there. Like that. Let's do one just here. So basically it's where the rock face has come away over time. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I see I've done the marks here where over time the rock face has come away. This needs brushing out before I paint it. I see these little bits are coming away still. You can vacuum that as well. It's more looking like a rock face now. So I'll see we need to brush that down before we start painting. 
but that's starting to take shape. It's the fun of this, you can do as much as you want or as little as you want, and it looks pretty good. So that is nearly ready for painting, as I say. Before I commence painting, obviously there's a crack here between the two layers of Silatex. This is where I've glued the two levels together. Obviously that's very visible and that needs eliminating. So what I'm going to use here is the Wix all-purpose uh, filler. What you do here is just basically get your finger in there, get a bit of filler out and just start filling in the cracks here. It's a bit of a messy job but it does work this way. Just continue doing that, make it nice and neat, just merge it in. Make sure you get those cracks filled, otherwise it won't look right at all. So continue doing that. Okay, I've filled the gaps there between the two with filler, smooth it over. Just got to let that dry now and then we'll put the first base paint coating Before down. Before I put the base coat down here, I'm just going to brush out the way any bits and pieces that are loose just by using this sort of brush, a little paint brush. And see these little bits falling out of here, you don't want that in the paint. So I just tidy it up a bit, the bits and pieces out of there, uh, basically the debris that's in there. What I'm going to use for the base paint is this Mars Black colour. It's acrylic. Uh, you can buy these for between £1.50 and £3. You don't want anything more than that really, nothing high end of the range. So this is your basic paint that's going to go uh, as a like a primer on the uh, Celotex here. So basically get some paint on your brush. Just make sure you get plenty of paint on here. Fill all the crevices. It may need two coats. Doesn't take too long to do. So just continue doing that until it's completed. That's had a good coating now. So I'm going to leave that dry till tomorrow. And um, you may find some blemishes that appears in a different light, say in daylight. So you may need a second coat in certain areas. Okay, what I'm going to do now, the top end here is laid bare. I'm going to paint this an earthy colour. It's before I lay any static grass on and it won't show the cream white colour. That won't come through when it's actually painted. So I'm just going to use a, a very darkish brown paint to cover that. It's a bit of paint I had left over. So just use earthy colours to coat that. Let's get some of the brush there. Just start painting through there. That's had a good covering so I'll let that dry overnight and that's ready for any static grassing when it's dry etc. So I've got to leave that to dry. The next stage is to colour the rock face in by using various different tones. So the major colour I'm going to use is this grey colour, which is a natural grey. Again, you don't need to pay more than £1.50 to £3.50 for this colour. So I'm going to add that to the rock face. And also blended in here is this burnt umber brown colour. Again, uh, you just need various tones of this to be added. So what I'm going to do here is use a dry brushing technique. So basically you need a piece of paper or card and then put various little blobs of the colour on the card. So I'm going to put a bit of grey there. Let's put a bit of brown burnt umber there. If it come out. That's a bit more grey. I'll do for now. And then I'm just going to dab into the colour and move that around on the sheet of paper scraping it off. I'm using a number 6 brush here, it doesn't really matter what you use but um, trial and error I think on this one. 
So then I'm going to start gently going across the rock face here very slowly using the dry brushing technique. Let's get a bit more off there. So again, dab your brush, smooth it out, start stroking across the rocks here, very gently. You need a very tiny amount on here. So just thin it out as much as you can. That's probably a little bit too thick. Go back on that. Press very lightly. That's been covered now. So that's the first tone, which is a, a light dry brushing over the surface there of grey. Now I'm going to start adding the tones. So I'm going to mix some of the burnt umber with a bit of grey here. Probably a bit more. Let's start adding some tones to this. So keep wiping your brush on a plain bit of paper or card. Let's start stroking over some of these areas. So say here. Bit more brown there. So keep adding these little tones. Bit of grey, bit of burnt umber, a little bit more. Just a bit just there, look. Let's tone that down. A more earthy colour. So if you look at rock faces, there are various colours, some even sandy colour. So you can add a, add a sandy colour as well. But it's very light brushes on the surface. Don't press too hard. That's starting to take form there. As you probably see already, it's picking up the tones on the surface here. A bit more work to be done. But it's starting to look like a rock face now. Okay, another colour I'm going to use here is this ochre colour. Uh, you don't need much of this. In fact, you don't need much paint at all, actually, to this process. I'm just have a little dab there of this ochre, which is like a sandy type colour. Let's put the lid on that. And I'm going to start working a few little areas on that as well. Let's pick some areas out, say here. Let's hold there, say. Don't need much of this. Again, it depends on what you like to do. Uh, with the rock face colours. So I'll do a few more down here. And do a few this side. It's been covered very well that side. Okay, I'll just focus in there for you. Start to sh take shape now. The next colour I'm going to add very lightly is this sap green colour. Let's get a little blob of that off. Don't need too much of this at all. This basically is where the moss will start showing on the rocks, etc. So, don't need much of this. I'm going to use another method as well. So, let's just get a little dab of that. Again, don't need too much of this at all. So, just pick certain areas around where it's cracked here, say. A bit there, a 
there, say. Let's do a few more so here. So there's the various tones. So you've got the greys, the browns, the ochre colour and the greens as well. It's quite satisfying doing this actually because it, it, you start seeing it transform. Okay for finishing what we're going to do is accentuate the rock tips on here. So what I'm going to use here is titanium white, again acrylic. So let's take a bit out there. Use a clean brush. And what I'm going to do here is start like the aging process of the rocks in a way. A bit more on the brush there. Just very lightly go over the whole thing. And that'll highlight the rocks. So you don't need much on the tip of the brush at all. A bit more there. Again dry brushing all the way through. Pick certain areas out. As you can see, this is highlighting the rock face. There's no particular direction here, but it looks better going down, to be honest with you. That's starting to age the rocks now. Yeah, that's better. And this just ages the rock face. Okay, that's the aging process done. Just by using small amounts of white paint, vertical strokes, you age the rock. And it also looks more 3D as well. So that has really transformed it now. You can go back and add more colours if you wish. I'm going to leave that like that for now and uh, show you the next stage. The next thing I want to do is add some moss effects around here. And what I'm going to do for this is add this fine green grass, fine turf, which is like a powder form. Uh, it's not static grass, it's like a powdery flock I use this spray from WWS and what I'm going to do is spray certain areas so let's say here There's a few little areas like that what you need to do is get the flock in your hand and just blow it onto the rock face <laughs> and it will just stick a few more a bits more Now, there you go. I think that's just enough. A light layer of colour in there, a bit dark if you wish. But that's come out quite well. The next stage, what I want to do is add some little overgrown grass on the edges here, not all over, just in various places. So, I'm going to use the WWS Summer 4 Mill. The pasture 6 mil and the knock wild grass again that's 4 mil it could be 6 mil so again just pick a spot let's say here so a blob of glue this is a bit of pasture grass to start with just place that over like there put it down Choose another area, not too much of this. Say so there, now let's go there. Let's go a little burnt grass here, dried out grass. A bit more of that, I think. So it was hanging off there. Like that. A bit more of the other grass. Basically just keep doing this and stick there, mix that in with a 
dry grass. Just basically keep doing that on the rock face, but not too many, just odds and ends in different areas. So it's where basically the grass has taken root, uh, where it's been carried along by the wind with the seeds, and that's got to dry now. So just various patches, don't need too much of that at all. It just highlights little individual areas there. Okay, next I'm going to add some bits of foliage and bushes on here, just very lightly. So you can see various colours from uh, like a dead colour to a mild green to a dark green and thrown in with some uh, redder colours and yellows as well. These are from Woodland Scenics. You can just use little bits of this so you don't need too much at all. Again let's pick an area and just use this bit of plastic, use a, a pin or something like that, just push in there, break a piece off, doesn't need to be too big. And then if I just glue that area there, so I just glue that in to another area, say on here, do the same again. Let's use a bit of dark green this time with a stem on it. There you go. Stick that in there. So basically just continue doing that. And that will enhance the rock face even more. Okay, quite happy with that. So you've got various bits of branches and shrubs. Um, bits of foliage growing out here. Uh, just got that to dry now. But already it's made a difference to the rock face there. So you've got the overhanging grass. Um, bits of... Um, foliage sticking out there. So I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. For the incline here, which leads to the top of the rock face on the cliff edge, I'm going to statically grass this with various different green tones and also some of the dried grass, which is this sort of stuff. Okay, put the first layer on there now. So what I'm going to do, there's a technique uh, that WWS scenery have uh, developed or seen them use anyway uh, to do like tufts of um, grass so what I'm going to do here, we think it looks a mess but it actually works just get your fingers in there scrunch around areas where the grass would have gathered say so around here up there around here keep doing that what we do now is start spraying with a spray into the static grass in those areas and then static grass again okay the static grassing is done I've added a thinner smaller fibre layer just to coat it over, fill the gaps in which is summer meadow from Gage Master so that's been added there just to thicken that up a bit but you can see the contours now are being made as if it's been really overgrown uh, all I've got to do now is add some bushes and overgrown weeds etc things like that so that's now completed so that's how you model rock faces using the Silatex insulation board material thank you for watching and any comments are more than welcome